Hello again, it's Tubal Cain, your YouTube machine shop teacher. And today I'm going to show you how to make a little chip picker upper. Now I made this one some time ago in uh, Tips 185. You may have seen that. And it works quite well. There's a magnet in here. And uh, I pick up chips on my machines rather than using an air gun. But it's too big to go into the slots of the Bridgeport mill. I have this one here. It was, uh, yeah, this is a brown and dull. And I've had that for 40 years, but through use, I have worn it out. That is, just by rubbing it back and forth in the T slots and on the lathe, there's a tiny crack. You won't be able to see it in the aluminum here. And uh, it just no longer functions or and it jams because now there's a swarf that's inside of here. So I'm going to attempt to copy this more or less. And here it is. I'm not going to make that today. I'm going to show you how I made it yesterday. So let's go on over to the Bridgeport real quickly and pick up some chips. This is a simulated demonstration because as luck would have had it, I cleaned this machine the other day and took out the garbage so there was no chips. So the, the chips that, uh, that are on here I dumped off the lathe, their turnings. But quite often, uh, in addition to using a brush, and for you guys that are using air hoses, you know, this doesn't really apply, but I, I don't like air hoses, but you can get very easily, you know, into the T-slots. Now, if you got 10 pounds of chips, this might seem kind of foolish to you, but generally you've done uh, the majority of the cleaning, and then you're trying to clean the uh, swarf that's left in there. So that's the purpose of this, a retractable magnet, complete with pocket clip. Now what's this enlarged doodad for, you're thinking? Well, you know, you, you cannot uh, insulate from magnetism. The only thing you can do is to uh, create some distance in there, and the chips would follow the magnet up the tool as I retracted this, so it's thicker right here, and the, the magnetism has less of a chance to travel through that thickness because it's just a greater distance. Otherwise, the chips, as you watch this, will follow it up, see? But most of them are getting knocked off there, but when I do it too slowly, they don't. So that's the purpose, and in fact, it could use just a little more thickness here. So if you're going to make one of these, make it a little bit thicker than what I have right here, which is 3 8 The material to be used for this is hobby brass. You've seen me use that before, and you can get that at any hobby store or hardware store. And I use 5 16 diameter. I did not close this up for the final time, so here's how it's constructed. This will be held in with Loctite in about a half hour. But I take the aluminum rod out with the magnet. Now you can see that this is just a piece of 5 16 thin wall tubing. And I did solder the end on. I tried loctiting it, but uh, there's such a short length of engagement that that was kind of a failure. So I soldered it, turned it down, and uh, that makes a nice end cap. And it's, how thick is it? A sixteenth or less. I'll talk about this later on, but that's all there is to it. Now, as far as this is concerned, that's three sixteenths aluminum, and there is the magnet. Now that's a tiny little uh, neodymium magnet. It's quarter inch in diameter, oh about eighth inch thick, doesn't really matter. But it had a hole in the center of it. Where did I get this? From my brother, I guess. Uh, but I only had one of them, that's why I'm not making another one now. I'm just telling you how to do it by way of this uh, um, prototype. You see, some of these magnets come with a hole in them. Some do not. Now, you cannot drill a hole in there, so don't even try it. They're very hard, and they're very brittle. And I had thought about even robbing the magnet out of some other tool, like this pickup tool, but then I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul, so that seemed kind of foolish. And in fact, I think you're better off with a, a weaker magnet than these 
neodymium, which are so strong that I have trouble with the chips crawling up the tool, as just uh, shown a few minutes ago. But anyway, that has to be your source for magnets. And then how did I fasten it on the end? Well, I don't have much faith in super glue. I know some of you people do it. I've just seen it failed too many times. And as a matter of fact, if you haven't uh, driven a car and ended up with your rear view mirror falling into your lap, coming off the windshield, then you just must still be a young man. Because that's happened to me countless times, and that's super glue. So, 3 16 rod, a little magnet. How did I hold it on? With number one, one inch long, 17 gauge, which is a little bit smaller than 16th inch, and that went right through the hole. It's a smaller hole in here than the other magnet down there, and I drilled a hole, I forgot what size it was, but enough for this to go into and actually be driven a little bit into the bottom to, se to secure it. Already contaminated with a swarf. So that's all there is to that. You need some way to limit the travel here. And I did that, there's a little stop there, simply by putting a tiny little snap ring in the groove and you can see in this prototype here that I had to move it about a quarter inch. That length should be determined but on this one it's about three and five eighths from the end. And there they are. That one there, they only cost 15 cents. 40 years ago, that is. They're probably 95 cents now. Now, since you won't have any of those in stock, an equally good way would be to take just a short little piece of the hobby tubing of the appropriate size, and I didn't have the right size, make a little sleeve, or turn one on the lathe, whatever. There's a lot of different ways of doing that. And then here, for grip and ornamentation purposes, are just five little grooves made with a threading tool to afford you a grip. You certainly could knurl that if you have a notion to. You can see that that little snap ring, that little uh, E-clip, is just the right size so that it will go into the tubing. And then this is a little piece of brass. I did turn that on the lathe. 5 sixteenths on the uh, OD, the largest diameter, and turned down so it will fit inside the tubing, which was approximately 281 thousandths or so. And I'm going to put some Loctite on that right now, since I have determined that uh, the dimensions are correct, and that's where I want it to be. I'm using some red Loctite, which takes about an hour to harden or set. But before I do that, let me talk about these sleeves here. This is actually two different pieces of hobby tubing. And if I had a third piece, I would uh, put that on there too. And that can be Loctited in place once I determine where I want it located. But it's such a good fit, it's not going to go anywhere. Now one other thing that I did on uh, this, but I took it off, I put a piece of shrink tubing on there. Shrunk it down and that also increased the uh, diameter just a little bit. These pocket clips I think you can still get them at office stores, but I just happen to have these in stock. You know, they used to have one of these on virtually every bit pen. There must be billions of them in the landfills. So there it is, basically copied off the brown and dull magnetic chip remover for the T-slots on the Bridgeport Mill.
Hope you enjoyed this short little video, and it's one of the shorter ones I ever made. And I'm just showing you how to make something rather than doing it, because you've mastered all these other skills by watching many of my other videos. So this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. And now I'll put this on.